So we're going to go ahead and jump into a match or two here with this and see how it goes. Uh, the last time we played this deck, it felt really powerful against more mid-range and control decks in the format, but it felt like it was kind of struggling against the aggressive deck. So uh, the person that submitted this deck list said that they felt like they had potentially short up some of those aggress uh, issues against aggressive decks. So let's see, see how this feels. I'm planning to add standard decks to my website. I am, actually. So um, I had someone offer to help me do that tonight, and this is... Uh, this is a preliminary set of standard decks on there. I still have to proof that. I think there's some there's some typos on this site currently, so I need to fix those. But that's the the rough outline of some standard decks on the website. This is truly unfortunate. Uh, I guess I do. I go to five here. I've got a scry and I've got a warlord's fury. I'm gonna keep it. Ding. Never never didn't have it yet. And so because the second land is guaranteed on top of my deck here, I'm actually not going to play the Warlord's Fury. And the reason for this is having a one mana cantrip in my hand on a later turn is valuable for potentially putting my Arc Lake Phoenix back into play for my discard pile. And I am actually just going to keep both of these. I want a third land that I want a Charter Course to put this Arc Lake Phoenix in the bin. How do the term Xerox relate to having a lot of cantrips? There's a lot of magic jargon. That's a very old piece of magic jargon. And a lot of early magic jargon just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm gonna bend the Phoenix. Uh, I'm going to shock this in. So I'm probably going to take a hit from this Branch Walker inside of combat using my health total as a bit of a resource here. Because if they play um, Jade Light Ranger, I want to be able to shock that in response to a trigger. Because that'll be a slightly larger creature. So, uh, remember, Jade Lights uh, enter the battlefield is a trigger that you can respond to. So, if I shock this in response, it's never going to have a chance to become a 4-3 and outgrow my shock. Like it would have been. All right, that is an electrostatic field. That sounds great. This electro electrostatic field is kind of like a piece of soft removal in this deck because um, it gets to block my opponent's 2-1 basically indefinitely. Charter course, charter course, charter course. I'm going to bottom that. I really just want to hit a blue source here. All right, that's another field. Yep. Perfect. All right, so I do this. I can... I can mission briefing, opt, and then Warlord's Fury... Uh, I guess I get more damage off of all of those. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So, like, I could wait and put the other Electrostatic Field into play here, but, like, I'm getting more damage off the field that way, but I'm being less resource efficient with that. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Those are the best. Those are the best, chat. So, and this is a small thing here too, but I know I'm casting Warlord's Fury this turn, and I know there's a card on top of my deck that I want to draw, so I'm actually going to sequence my Warlord's Fury before my opt, because I might have something underneath this Warlord's Fury that I would like to opt past. Like this island, I would really like to not draw that island. There's a radical idea for later. Get my bird into play, get the sweet cacaw animation across the screen. We're in a pretty good spot here, right? Like, they're at 10. This bird's hitting them potentially to 7 next turn. I would love to block here. I've got this other electrostatic field coming down, and then all my cards deal extra damage. Yeah, sure. Uh, our field's done three or four points of damage so far. The Arc Lake Phoenix got in there, got in there last turn. That was part of the damage that we dealt. Um, I'm gonna start with Radical Idea. Eh, let's do this. I'll just go ahead and attack for her. Yeah, the opponent definitely has, definitely has reasonable tools to be competitive in this matchup. They are, they are by no means just dead. Uh, oh, you know, maybe I should have just Radical plus Warlorded this turn. If 
If I would have, if I would have, by not playing this, by waiting on this, I potentially give myself a chance to bring back the Phoenix with it. But by waiting on it, I potentially miss damage with these electrostatic fields die. So it's kind of like one six and one and a half dozen in the other. That's yeah, just a Carnage turn. I think they're dead, right? Yeah, they're actually just dead, right? Because it's going to be Radical Idea, Jumpstart Radical Idea, Warlord Fury, which is six between those. Oh, I guess that's actually not just dead. All right, so I need to draw a card here. Because they're not, they're not guaranteed dead, so let's draw a card. I'd, I'd end up one short there. It's another Creeping Chill. Okay. Uh, creeping Chill deals five, and then this deals six, seven. So that comes up a little bit short. I should probably Fury to start, right? Because if I find, I get two shots to find a one or two two cost spell. Because I have, I have Radical Idea here too, right? So I just need another instant or sorcery that I can cast after this Radical Idea. Like this Discovery Dispersal. All right, so they're dead. Oh yeah, Untapped Land was good too. Yeah, we just had an absurd number of good draws there. These fields have been really good. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So bigger, bigger green black. What do I, what do I want? What do I want to be doing here? So I think the shocks are actually pretty good here, especially on the draw. I want to keep like their explore creatures off my back. I think the radical ideas are good here. I'm not sure if creeping chill is ideal in this matchup or not. Maybe, honestly, it's just, like, one shock in for one creepy chill and I leave the rest the same. It's really sweet, Matt. And the, the the actual sweetest part about it is because it has so many cantrips in it, it does the same thing almost every game. I think I'm going to just a bit like this. Is less good because you're not racing them. You're looking to get under them. Well, getting under them, Creeping Chill kind of gets under them in a way, right? Like it jumps up and kills them. I'm going to try this. I don't actually know how I want to approach this matchup. I also think that there's a non-zero chance that like Fiery Cannonade is good in this matchup, but maybe not if they're going as big as Carnage Chart in the main deck. And that's one of the things that makes it tough to play against Green Black right now is that there's so many different iterations of Green Black that are competitive that it's, it can be difficult to peg exactly how big your opponent's deck is from a game one. This is my handful of cantrips. Pick your favorite. It's probably the charter course. They took the mission briefing. Okay. Huh. Huh. We're up to 1,400 people here this evening. That's awesome. It's been really great to not only see people enjoying Arena, but also Standard. Standard format's been quite excellent so far in my experience. What's your best bet for getting green black decks at the deck selection screen though? Um, I kind of feel like the green black archetype in general can kind of be built to beat whatever it really wants to beat. So I think there's, I think it's tough. Like basically I feel like you can choose to beat specific iterations of green black, but beating all of green black in general is kind of a tough sell. Do I want to just cycle this? I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. The, uh, the green black deck we just got done playing, it felt very good in the green black mirror. I also think some of the more controlling decks in the format are very good against black green, like Esper and Jeskai and blue black. Those decks can be built to beat it. Honor Guard, I think, is a very good herd for beating black green as well. That's true. Uh, I think I'm going to start on Sharda Course here. Because if I hit a Phoenix, I can put it into play this turn. No, no birdie, huh? I'm going to bend Lightning Strike here. While Lightning Strike is one more point of damage, the resource efficiency on these cheaper spells is important for bringing my birds back eventually. Uh, I definitely don't want Highlands Lake. I think I might want another field here. Like, they're drawing a cast down off the top of their deck, which means they're almost certainly going to kill this. And this is, excuse me, like a soft removal spell that's also going to turn my other cards into points of damages.
Mm. I technically tap my lands wrong here. I should prioritize tapping this Drowned Catacomb because the only black spell in our deck is Creeping Chill, but honestly, I think I'm probably just going to Lightning Strike one of these Squires this turn. I think I just want to keep my health total high. Do I? So this is... Let's let's count here, actually. This is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then this is technically 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Actually, uh, I do not want to kill their thing, and I am just going to start upstairsing them. So I'm going to bin Radical Idea here. I'm going to leave this mountain on top of my deck. And then I'm going to target Shard, of course. And then we'll we'll play Shard, of course, here, which will deal a damage to them, which is then going to draw us into this mountain and discard this Arclight Phoenix. And then we'll cast Warlord's Fury, which will bring the Arclight Phoenix back into play during our combat step. Wow, this is... we. This deck is humming tonight. I, I love the Phoenix animation. It's so clean. Just like, Kaka! The little Get the little lightning in the wings, too. Yeah, goodbye, friend. Yeah, when this, when this deck finds an okay mix of, like, Phoenixes and stuff, it's very, very reasonable. How do you turn the graphics down on this thing? They're too flashy. Back in my day, we played magic with spin downs. This deck is definitely sweet. Whether or not it's good, I think, remains to be figured out. Like I said, I think it's very competitive against these slightly slower mid-range decks and the control decks in the format, but I think it uh, potentially leaves some to be desired against aggressive strategies. We do have, we did add a new emote to the channel this evening. Uh, yeah, seems sweet. Had no idea there was a competitive ladder been playing with outside boards for weeks. Yeah, it's kind of hidden, Nick. It's not, it's not well advertised. It's not, it's not Magic Arena's most advertised feature. All right, well, that one, that one we're going to strike off the face of the planet here. That one, that one's a must kill. And so I think this build of black green is going to be a little bit harder for us to deal with. Um, they're the wild growth walker and especially land war elves generally signifies that the opponent's deck is going to be lower to the ground, which I think is going to give us a little bit harder time here. So they didn't have a play this turn, which means if I shock this elf, they probably won't have a play next turn either. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That being said, they could have Ravenous Chupacabra as their 4-drop, so maybe I'm just supposed to, like, hang tight, because if that's their 4-drop, they get to go land Chupacabra in my field. Yeah, because, like, I gave them something to do with this Chupacabra here. Maybe, maybe that was a little bit bad. Uh, Rainbow Lich got pushed uh, down in the queue by a couple of other people voting for stuff, so we will we'll be, we'll get to Rainbow, Rainbow Lich uh, next time we play Standard on stream. Most likely. Back in my day, Facebook was optional. Well, I feel like there aren't moment of cravings in the main decks of any of these green black decks. That's a pretty safe block there for me. Suddenly, my cantrips deal damage, chat. Suddenly, my cantrips deal damage. The next deck. Uh, my general rule is a deck has to get bumped to 100 points to cut the line into my current queue. My plan for the night. It's my, my general rule of thumb. 
What's the what's the Rainbow Lich deck at? The Rainbow Lich deck is currently at 44 points. So you wanted to jump it up over everything else, yeah, plus 56. If you wanted to jump it up over everything else I have going on. These things acting as soft removal is just quite fantastic. Just like every one of these cantrips, just like shock you, shock you. So I probably just want to opt plus Warlord's Fury here. I could Discovery, but guaranteed getting the bird back is probably ideal. Yeah, that that is just a six six flyer. There's no no other text. Six six flying trample. No other text. <laughs> that is the best reason to not like creeping chill this deck. It doesn't let me auto tap enough. God bless. Whoa. Let the greed consume you. They kept both on top. God, that's got to feel terrible. They have finality? It's got to be finality, right? Yeah. They're at seven. So they're just dead on our untap. We're just going to like end step, strike, strike, untap, snapcaster, strike. Good old bolt, bolt, snap, bolt you. Let me just, let me just, let me just set the tone about what this game is about here, opponent. Mission briefing during the old upkeep here. Let them know that we had it and didn't draw it. Yeah. Yeah, even, even if they didn't surveil, we had them there. They would have been at nine instead of seven. All right, so I want shock. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of all the creeping chills here. I think I want these price of fames against the wild growth walker build. It also kills the demon too, which is not irrelevant. Need one more cut here then. I don't think I want to trim a radical. Maybe I don't want all the shocks. Nah, I'm gonna trim a warlord's fury. I think I think the filler card is fury if you're looking for if you're struggling to find the last cut usually. Sounds good, Matt. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm playing uh, operative after this, but it's probably not gonna be for another hour or so. Uh we won the first game. So we are up a up a game here against Green Black. Yeah, yeah, those are, you're not missing anything. Those are, those are only two Creepy Chill Enablers. Also keep in mind that like we have six black sources in our deck and we draw a lot of cards out of our deck every game. So like we can just draw and cast Creeping Chill. Like you, you kill people with Creeping Chill and non-zero amount in this deck. Just like pay, play my four mana Lightning Helix. Oh, that's true. We did board in Price of Fame, which enables it. Boop him on the nose. Imagine if we could J scream. Found found our modern deck, Zach. Jace, Jace the Mind Sculptor really did break modern. We just didn't know how until now. I gotta, gotta, Wild Growth Walker's gotta go. Uh, I'm gonna bin both of these. Not really looking for, for another land at the po this current point in time. I'm gonna shock this in so that way I can shock a Jade Light Ranger if it comes to the play this turn. Just so it doesn't turn into a 4-3. If they don't give me a Jade Light Ranger to shock, I'll just go ahead and opt. So like, no harm, no foul. 
So I get to use my mana regardless. Midnight Reaper. That's a pretty good one. Uh, let's check out our options here. I'm going to take a land at this point. I think I will take a fourth. I don't want to be greedy and then end up missing. It's a decent bird to draw. Um... Yeah, I saw the mono blue list that came out of the event in Japan. We haven't played with that build yet on stream yet, though. What am I doing here? I think it's just play Arc Lake Phoenix and attack, honestly. So, like, they're, they're missing lands, and, like, if they kill this, I can just, like, get it back next turn. So, like, seems fine. Oh, feels bad, man. Like, undid my whole bird. I don't think Sovereign's Bite really fixes problems that we have. We're not really, we're not really looking for, we're not really looking for explicitly more, um, more ways to just like lightning strike them. The only reason Creeping Chill, Creeping Chill is free a lot of the time. You just like surveil past it. Like it's passable because it doesn't things other than that. Oh, you know what? I was thinking I cut my black cards. So I cut the Creeping Chills. I actually have copies of, Price of fame in my decks. So I probably should have kept the Strong Catacombs earlier. Let's see if we get punished for that. Yeah, I think we're dead. I think we're dead. I guess I could double strike this. Nah, this feels like playing to not lose. I don't know. I guess we're. I guess we're extremely dead if this lives. So. They basically get to Vampiric Tutor here. Although, I guess if they hit this too much, we could maybe steal, steal, steal our way back into this game. Yeah, I'm not worried about fixing the sideboard right now. People will figure it out. I don't know. Phoenix seems powerful. It's Every time we get Phoenix going in this deck, it feels very, very good. And it's not just this deck that... <laughs> that's very aggressive. It's not just this deck that I'm playing here tonight that's leveraging Phoenix. There's a, a blue-red spells deck in Standard that's been leveraging Phoenix. There's a mono-blue deck, effectively, that's been leveraging Phoenix out of that came out of uh, Event in Japan. It's not, it's not just me. My mission is more valid. The Another land here. Okay, so I think because I hit the land, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start on discovery and then probably chart a course. Could like dig for some birds here. Perfect. I've definitely ditched the bird. Do I want this mission briefing? I don't think I do actually. I think I just want the most chance to hit like a second bird here. So this Warlord's Fury means I have to kill them next turn. So I'm going to be dead on board. If they have another Vraska's Contempt here, I'm probably just dead. It's worth noting that if this price of fame was a creeping chill, we'd actually be in a pretty good spot, right? I don't know. I don't know if it's right necessarily to... I don't know if it's right necessarily to keep that card in our deck, but if that had been the other card, we'd have been pretty pretty well off here because we wouldn't be dead on board and we'd have, we'd have a phoenix coming back and we'd be able to survive through next turn. I'm gonna look for a shock here so we're not dead on board. I would only play my decks to the queue. Listen, if you always call the shots, eventually you, you hit some of them. 
I don't think it's right to have Creeping Chill in my deck in this matchup. I don't know, this card seems so slow. There was a write-up about it on Channel Fireball at some point, I believe. I don't I don't know. I'm still I'm still uncertain about how I want to approach this matchup in general. I feel like the surveilled one might just be too slow to interact with Wild Growth Walker even on the play. Maybe I should just keep the chills in because they like the, the buffering my health total that extra little bit. Like if we just had one more turn there, if we'd have like hit our opponent for six, like that seems like it would have been very, very good for us. Oh, I, have a, I have a hard time mulliganing lands land chart, of course. Chart's very, very good in this matchup. Probably Discovery next turn. Again, just like looking at a bird set up ASAP. Huh. Let me keep both of those. I'm gonna play this out so we can shock whatever they play this turn. I think I want to keep both of these. I, I basically just want to, like, dig to my birds, right? And, like, these are going to let me dig to birds, like, very, very quickly. Respond to the trigger in case it turns into a 4-3, or would turn into a 4-3, I should say. Yes, the discard. How unlucky. Need another black source and have plenty of blue here, so ditch that. Yep. So I'm gonna briefing during my upkeep here. Because if I put a card on top that I might want to draw, I'd like to draw a guarantee for the turn. Because remember, this lets me flash back the card that I put in my bin until end of turn, so that's fine. I'm gonna target shard of course here, so that way if I draw a Phoenix, I can uh Phase. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna cast this chart of course that's got flashback till end of turn. Or can be cast from my discard pile till end of turn. Okay, look at that. That's an Arc Light Phoenix. Alright, sweet. So let me cast the Warlord Fury as our third spell for the turn. Which is gonna bring our bird back into play here. So we'll put them down to 10. Electrostatic Field has the Midnight Reaper on lockdown. Probably gonna put a stop on my upkeep again and run back the same mission briefing play because I've got another chart of course in here, right? Yeah. yeah, it's actually got a lot going on. And it's very consistent because it just like plays through its cards. So like any any deck you're playing against that like gives you time to like play your cards, you have pretty good game against. Yeah, I think Gutter Sight's just a little bit too expensive. It dies to a lot. And, like, the reason why the Electrostatic Field gets the pass in this deck is not only is it cheaper than Gutter Snipe, but, like, it's basically a soft removal spell. It's a card that, like, basically negates my opponent's, uh, my opponent's 3-2 here. I have no idea about the Magic Arena events like that. Lightning Strike, is that lethal? Lightning Strike is probably lethal, right? Lightning Strike is four, Shock is three, Bird is three. Yeah, that can stay, that can stay there. If you're here or watching this tomorrow, I think you're correct in your assessment that we cut Electrostatic Field too aggressively the last time we played this deck was good. This build, this build feels much better. And just like the, the Electrostatic Field being an 0-4 to like block on the ground has been like exceptionally relevant in all of these games. Very, very reasonable.
How's everyone doing tonight? Everyone's having a great Wednesday. I guess it's Thursday. Is it Thursday where I'm at now? Almost Thursday. Two minutes away from Thursday here in the cornfields. If you're new to the stream, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, it's probably a good time to restart the client while I'm chilling here. Um, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing uh, Magic 30 plus hours a week. If you enjoy my stuff, make sure you hit the follow button if you're new. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything and it lets you know when I go live and with what. Uh, past following if you really want to help keep me here subscribing is the best way to do that i love what i do here but my subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time i wouldn't be here day to day out without their very wonderful support um i'm still going for another uh probably hour and a half two hours here tonight hey jerry tones thanks for shipping that twitch prime this way this month thanks for sharing that i do appreciate it um if you're hungry to see more of my content after this and basically everything i stream on this channel gets archived to my youtube channel youtube.com forward slash jeff hoagland you also find that on my website jeffhoagland.com and uh i break everything up in those places by deck so you can watch just the stuff that you care about so for instance if you want to see more of this grixis phoenix deck we played uh two other sets of games with this deck previously and you can find all of those archived there Having only eight surveil effects seems low for Creeping Chill. Have you thought about the deep black splash a little bit more for something like Notion Rain? So what I think you're doing there is you're trying to work too hard to enable this card. And I think what we've done is a little bit better approach to it, which is that I've just, I'm simply just playing some black lands. So when I get into situations where I can't like chart a course or radical idea away this, um, this hand is great. Needs a land, obviously, but we got some cantrips. Um, when we can't just like radical idea or chart a course away a drawn creeping chill, we just go ahead and cast it, and it's mostly fine. I'm doing fantastic, and Andy plays TV. Life is life is just swell. Fan fantastical. Yeah, there's an extra shock in the sideboard. There's five shocks in the list. Must, uh, must have fat fingered something when I did it. That's very scary, chat. This is uh, this is the best start out of the mono blue deck. If they have a uh, if they have a dive down, we're in a lot of trouble. Our shock is one card late. I'm gonna strike this now because it demands dive down or spell pierce. If I let them untap, they could have wizard retort as well. They have dive down. Yep. Yeah. That, so the mono blue deck has some decent draws. Uh, super punished for not leading on shock. Um, the mono blue deck has some decent draws that involve uh, tempest yin, but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty mediocre when it doesn't have curious obsession going. And when it has curious obsession going, especially on the play like this where they have the protection spell for it, it just like feels basically unbeatable because it basically is. Um, but the draws, the average draws outside of that, can tend to leave a little bit to be desired. We played it a few times; it feels okay, but I don't know that it's uh, it's definitely a good deck for the price. The amount of wins you get to the amount of money you put in ratio is very good Two drop thank you very much for the brand new twitch prime i appreciate that welcome uh field doesn't really block here does it of course they also can't kill it so it just like rails their health totals so that's probably fine from that perspective i think this is a duress matchup i'm not actually sure I wonder if this is a... Is this a cannonade matchup? I don't know if this is actually any better than the blue-red version. I do like the electrostatic fields over Electromancer. I mean, like, this is basically a blue-red deck, Mean Bob. Like, the, the these lands are pretty free. So, like, the differences between that and, like, the list that's been going around on Magic Online is that, like, there's Crackling Drakes in it, right? Kennedy hits everything except the genie. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Oh, it doesn't hit the siren. That's true. The siren's a pirate. It does not hit pirates. We'll see. And if this is the first time I've played this matchup, so I'm not sure exactly what to prioritize and why. Honestly, this is another matchup. I'm not sold on these Price of Fames. I feel like there's a good chance these Price of Fames should just be Lava Coils. I 
There's a good chance these should just be the two mana deal for her. My Twitter timeline is great. Thanks. A lot of, lot of magic stuff, some non-magic stuff. All my, all my deck lists end up there when I'm playing throughout the day, so I always tweet out what decks I'm playing and when. Uh, let's do this. And I'm going to leave red up here in case we draw shock. That, uh... There's another one that card doesn't kill. I think the bouncer veil is pretty bad, Nick. I think I think I I think I'd prefer lava coil. It just feels real bad there. Just like trade my four mana for their one. It's like lose a ton of tempo on that. That um. Huh. Let's race. deal resolves yeah bird the bird is like the cat the cat comes back chat Yeah, yeah, I just want something that costs that's more efficient than these prices, I agree. I think Lava Coil is probably the droid I'm looking for. Yep. And at least they haven't drawn Curious Obsession in this game, right? Like, the fact that they haven't found an Obsession yet means we're still in this. Does this deck feel like, it's like a it's like a standard powered level version of Vengevine, yeah. This format's got a lot going on in it. There's there's a deck for basically everyone in this format. We can't really block with the Phoenix. It's not not really an option. I'm gonna bend the strike, pick the strike, shock. Nope, nope, don't do that. Shock this in. Attempt to strike this. Get the Phoenix back. Maybe I should have been the Warlord with double opt in my hand. Kind of just need another way to... Yeah, they have a lot, they've had a lot of counters, but, like, they don't have another threat, right? So, like, eventually we're going to find one of our removal spells is going to stick and we'll be A-OK. -okay. Eventually one of my removal spells is going to stick and I'll be A-OK. -okay. Woof.
All right, one more, one brick, please. One, one, one piece of brick city. There's not a lightning strike in here still. Crap. Oh, crap. God, why isn't this lava coil? Why isn't this? I... Oh, I thought I had a lightning strike in there, but I didn't cast it. I surveilled past that one last time. They drew another counterspell. They didn't draw a counterspell. God bless. All right, so I, I technically punted my surveil here. I should have gotten rid of that to rest, but it worked out because their thing died. Stupid thing is finally dead. Goodbye. Is it wrong of me that I find it funny when somebody does when you when someone uses the punt command unironically because they didn't read the stream rules? So the stupid pirate things are bad in this matchup. So we'll swap those out for this third game. The punt command is in fact the 10 minute timeout because the stream rules explicitly ask you not to use it. All right, so these were, these were pretty rancid. Um, I wish these were something else, but I think I have to keep them in. The mission briefings were actually good because they like flashbacked my they flash back my things. Honestly, I think I'm gonna... Wait, is Niv Mizzet good here? This might actually be okay. Huh. Let's do it. Let's do it. If this Highlands Lake was untapped, I might gamble this. But just like the up, the upside just isn't isn't good enough. Let's see, this hand is much better. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that is that's not where we want that one. I love that it makes an audible noise when I slide the cards around. Just like Watsy's met us before, they know they know what we need. That was a good draw there. Man, I'm glad we cut Fiery Cannonade. Man, I'm glad we cut Fiery Cannonade. If that card, uh... 
that card was a two mana if that card was a lava coil i'd keep it there hey the deck master extension is enabled army keep captain command all right so we're dead Doesn't matter because they have two Storm Teamer Sirens in play. All right, let's uh, let's cut these stupid Price of Fame from the sideboard, shall we? We can update the Stream Decker and fix the extra card in the sideboard that's listed. We were going to die before we got to Niv. Our health total is not in an ideal spot. Yeah, I have a desk with uh, with motors in the legs, so it goes up and down. So I split my time when I stream standing and sitting. I do, I do try to do about 50-50, or a little bit more standing than sitting. I think it was for a mix of things Tim talks a lot, because, like, the Wild Growth Wanderer can, like, get out, out of range of Lava Coil and stuff like that, so it has, uh, has upside there, but four mana is a lot of mana. And, like, we don't always have black mana in this deck. Like, we have six black sources and we have a lot of cantrips, but it's not a guarantee. This is not my deck list, not real quick. So, this is the deck list Marty's been working on. So, this is the configuration that he's come to. I'm going to cut these Price of Fame statement bands. Shock's not good in every matchup. And, like, we have plenty of burn. And, like, the uh, like the bird's a recurring threat. Like, we're not a dedicated burn deck. We're, like, a combo burn deck that, like, uses creatures to pressure the health total as well. Double Sulfur Fall is, like, a little bit awkward. But, like, the rest of the hand's really good. Is it more efficient to buy packs or wild cards or play draft and sealed? I have no idea. I don't enjoy playing limited, so I don't play it. If you enjoy playing limited, it's probably good to play limited to build your collection. You get to keep the cards that you draft. But if you don't enjoy playing limited, life's too short to have your hobby feel like a chore. Oh, you know what? I should have opted there because if I opted into a uh, shock land, I'd want to play the shock land out. I'm gonna strike this now because killing this removes their only wizard from play, which can be good. Would you put expansion over price since it fits the mana better? Those cards do completely different things, like Amash. So I'm not sure why why they why they would be comparable in your mind. Not sure what what reason we would have to compare them to one another. Runaway Steamkin, probably about to live up to its name here. I can't, I can't block it because the Fanatical Firebrand just kills my field at that point. I mean, I guess I can block it, but it doesn't feel good. The attack with the Firebrand is really bad here. They missed three points of damage by doing that. Yeah, this is a much better attack. Probably did here because we fumbled a little bit to start.
Now, this is the third or fourth time we played this deck on stream. And this deck list and a lot of the deck lists that we play on the stream are viewer submitted decks. So this isn't just like, this isn't really all my ideas. Most of these ideas aren't mine, in fact. We're pretty dead here. Let's move to the next one. Just fumble. Opponent, opponent fumbled, but we fumbled more. And like I said, this is, uh, we were playing this deck last time. This is one of the, one of the styles of matchups that felt like pretty exceptionally bad. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it's like pretty close to unwinnable. Like kind of just get got and die. I wonder if I'm supposed to board bigger in a matchup like this and just like go all the way up to Niv Mizzet. Just like be kind of a be kind of a control deck that like then eventually wins with this cards. I could see that. Could see that being reasonable. I wonder if I just trim Arc Lake Phoenix. Is that insane? I feel like that's not insane. I don't think that's true. In fact, I think uh, I think most most game I think most games that resemble us winning this matchup uh, involve us getting two six lands or more. So like like if you ask if, if you ask I would like to like have you describe to me what a what a game we're winning in this matchup looks like where we don't get to six lands on average. Because I think uh, most of the games we're going to win involve getting to six mana or more. Seems pretty good on the play. Be a little bit slow on the draw without a shock, but. On the play, like turn two fields, pretty decent, especially with the lava coil to follow it up. Some other selection. I don't think that's strictly true. Strong cloudy Zeus, like, like I'm, I'm just. In fact, that's just not constructive. So take a break. Our deck, our deck literally has like a plethora of removal in it, and we boarded in even more removal. Lava Coil. I, honestly, I wouldn't have even boarded Prison in this matchup if we're being honest. So. Alright, they've got some reach in hand, believe it or not. Let's take this. Huh. Sulfur Falls, Watery Grave. Um, I'm probably in for this Watery Grave, huh? Just like, I want to get to six lands for Niv eventually anyways, and this will be cast my Creeping Chill. Come at me. Wait, what? Alright, deal. bunch of blockers here creeping chill is just like actually lightning helix next turn which is just like a very playable card in this matchup it's lightning helix plus right because it's like gonna gain us three and deal them five with the electrostatic fields it's like very very castable i'm like look at this game that we're potentially winning where i'm gonna put my six land into play next turn because you know that's what games that we win look like we put six lands into play i'm like Next turn, I'm gonna mission briefing this creeping chill. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be great.
The mana is very consistent in this deck. Uh, Creeping Chill is the only black card in the deck, and you play six black lands to cast it, and often you don't have to cast it. And this deck has a ton of cantrips in it, so when you do need to find black mana, you see enough cards that you will consistently find your black mana. Golly, if this if this mission briefing hits Creeping Chills, the game is just O V E R. Just gonna put them, put them deep in the ground. <laughs> that uh, I'm gonna count that as a W for the home team. I'm gonna I'm gonna count that one as the W. This better be in the right order, chat. Is the one on top the newest one? The one on top's the newest one, right? Woo! All right, didn't, didn't get God, God bless. Nice, Matt Wood. Yeah, the operative deck is sweet. All right, you're at four. It really is, Zach. It's a good time. Helix you, Helix you again. I guess I'll take four since I just gained nine. Fourth paper sorkin last night. Nice. Yeah, the the Grixis Dragon deck seems sweet. Yeah, I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded actually. I think the Phoenix is out makes a lot of sense. Gimpy, thank you for the three month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I think I think I'm happy with this. Electrostatic Field was just, just an A+, plus, just quite, quite fantastic. How long have I been playing Magic? Uh, I started playing Magic a uh, long, long, long time ago. In a galaxy far away, Naboo was under an attack. I don't know, I don't know why we, we went into uh, a little bit of Weird Al there, but it, it felt natural, so I ran with it. Uh, this is probably a mulligan, right? Just like doesn't do anything. This hand also doesn't do a lot, but it's got a scry on the draw, so let's do it. Gutter Snipe just dies to a lot. You want to point out that the chat on the left side of the screen is very distracting. The chat on the left side of the screen is important because all of my streams get archived to my YouTube channel, which allows the people who watch on YouTube in the future to understand the questions that I'm responding to while I am streaming. It also allows people who are watching on, say, an Xbox or a chromecast to be able to see the chat messages that i'm responding to because i'm very very interactive while i stream being being interactive is one of the best parts about streaming so i want people that aren't here to catch it live or watching on different platforms to be able to see that but why not on the right side because see the risk factor that is directly underneath me the risk factor that is directly underneath my picture is uh is the reason why reason why it's on the side of the screen that it's on yep 
When you're testing a deck, do you use a versioning system? No. Uh, my casting mission briefing here. I don't know if I want to cast mission briefing here. They're probably going to risk factor me next turn. I'm at six. So that means I could theoretically die next turn if they have like briefing. They have risk factor. They draw like a shock. They've already played a shock though, right? No, they've not. All right. So, hmm. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to briefing here. Find two creeping chills. Zero creeping chills. That's incredibly sad. I'm actually going to put the discovery in the bin here because the discovery gives me two more chances to find a creeping chill. I'm going to hope not to die next turn. Definitely not winning a game where they draw three cards here, so kill me. Mm. That feels good. I tapped my lands wrong. I should have, uh, I should have left up red, red here instead of red, red, and then a watery grave. If we can dodge another risk factor, we can dodge a ball. Yep. Untapped, untapped land, unta basic land, buddy land, basic land, buddy land, basic land, buddy land. That is a shock land. All right, that is, I'll take it. They just draw like a couple of lands here. We'll be in an absurd spot. That being said, we're dead. Good game. the slowest of rolls. <sighs> We're very, very close. Very, very close. And that's, that's what happens, right? It's like the burn deck in modern, right? Like they, they had a risk factor that did eight to us and we only found one creeping chill and then like they only had four lands and like 13 or 14 cards. It's like sometimes you die. It's just how it goes. Uh, maybe they had a fifth land. I think they discarded a land of the Risk Factor, so I guess that's fair. Risk Factor helped their flooding a little bit. Let's play one more with this deck before we roll on onto the blue, the blue black operative deck to wrap things up tonight. Eh, I'm doing okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll squeeze in pirates. I don't know. I don't know how late I want to stay up. Hand seems good. I actually, um, the well-built green-black decks with wild growth walkers that want to beat mono red, they destroy mono red. The green-black decks becoming popular largely pushed mono red out of, out of the magic online results. Well, you can find a ton of pirates on my YouTube channel. We played it three times. Three quanti three quantifies is a ton, right? Close enough. I think every card that I put into my deck that doesn't draw cards and isn't an instant or sorcery comes at a very real cost. And I think the upside of Firemind's research does not outweigh the negative of it not meeting those requirements that my deck has.
yeah, jeffhoagland.com. There's a videos link at the top. There's a deck list link at the top. The standard decks aren't public on the site yet. I need to proofread the pages that I had someone put together for me, but they'll, they'll be up there either tomorrow. They'll be up there tomorrow. I'm, I'm off from streaming tomorrow, so I'll get it done then. You also find all of them on my YouTube channel. So there's a bunch of all my videos are on my website, my YouTube channel. In the video descriptions, there are there are deck list links. There's links and uh, arena formatted list that you can copy. Yep. Am I dancing? I'm bouncing back and forth a little bit. A little bit of physical movement helps me keep my energy level up and stay focused on the game. I'm going to start with Charter Course here. Does does help with blood flow. You're not wrong. I'm going to bin the Phoenix. I'm going to opt looking for a one mana spell. Put the bird into play, hopefully. Perfect. We've got, we've got a mission, chat. We're on a mission from God, see? So, I think I'm throwing my bird away to gain five here. What? Uh, sure. They have a Convoke card? They must have March of the Multitudes, right? That's why they didn't attack with the other two? We're probably just dead to that. Our uh, Fiery Cannonades will be pretty good out of the sideboard here. Yeah, they probably still should have attacked. I agree with that. If Ixalan's Binding hits the bird, the other birds can still come back from your discard pile. You don't really cast bird in this deck. in my bin I would like to draw this mountain I would like to target a one mana spell here I'm gonna go ahead and draw this mountain for the turn I'm gonna go ahead and cast this up looking for another Phoenix here ideally so we get uh, four shots to find another Phoenix here we get two looks from opt then we get two looks from uh, charter course Pretty unfortunate. I don't think I need this other mission briefing. It's probably going to be over before that's relevant. Although maybe it's just right to just like dish the radical idea because like that one comes back later. Just not beating that card game one. Not without a more aggressive start. Need a couple more birds. Cannonade sounds great. Um, I'm kind of torn on electrostatic field here. So on one side, they go wide around it, so it's not very good as a pseudo removal spell. But on the flip side, their deck doesn't have a ton of removal in it, which makes its effect kind of kind of good. Let's try this maybe. 
I like leaving the shocks, and I want some spot removal to pick off some of their stuff, but I definitely want to leave the more mana efficient one in to make the bringing back the Phoenix better. We could bring in niv -Mizzet. I'm kind of expecting them to leave the Exile Enchantments in their deck, though, and, like, Niv's, like, really bad against the Exile Enchantments. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna run it like this. I don't think someone commented on Duress. Like, the problem with this deck is, and Duress, the Duresses are in the sideboard of this deck for the slower counterspell-based matchups, because remember, we only have six black sources in our mana base, which means we're not going to be able to consistently cast Duress early. Just like, mathematically speaking, it's just not gonna happen. He says as he has black mana in his opening hand. That Hogland, he's a big old, big old phony. What a liar. Nothing but a big old phony. Would love a bird. Thank you. I believed in you. Nothing but a liar. So because I already have a bird to discard in my hand, it doesn't really matter if I sequence uh, Charter Course or Discovery First Tier. Go digging for a land with the discovery next turn. That Amara is really good. Need red source plus cannonade ASAP here. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and shock this in. While I while I kinda want this op to bring back my Phoenix at a later turn, I think I need to opt now because I just need cannonade ASAP with the Samara in play. Just need to need to get that going. Is this a replay? Nope, we're live and in Technicolor here. Look at that, chat. Just like we drew it up. Just like we drew it up. Just like I saw on TV. I uh, I'm doing an evening stream every Wednesday night moving forward. I'll be starting about 8:30 p.m. Central Standard Time and going till uh, I don't know, 1, 2 a.m. or so. I no longer have a regular Thursday stream because I am doing a double on Wednesday. Yeah, definitely waiting until the next night. Not close. Nobody move. Don't flinch. Don't flinch. Don't. Oh, you flinched. Told you not to flinch. Bye, friends. A little, little cinder there. Yeah, did I did I did drop in and give bits. We we had a really good moment on stream. It was it was fantastic. We'll post the clip later for sure. All right, so uh, that's actually a really good draw because it means on the back of this mission briefing for the opt, I can actually get my Phoenix back this turn. Can't, can't fear the auto tapper. The auto tapper is your friend, chat. Boop. Pretty sure I just keep all these discoveries. They help me. This card's really good at finding birds. That's the clip he cheered for, Serpy boy. He cheered after that one. Mono red constructed player who tapped manually. Woof. Woof.
Shillelagh. Shillelagh. I'm in for a land. Nah, I'm gonna draw enough cards that we'll find another land. Find another land. Find another land later. Mmm, that one doesn't target it. It's each opponent. That's so good. When will you let me sleep? I'm planning to go. I'm playing one more deck after this one, so we're going for at least another hour. Boop. Boop, 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 boop him on the nose. Did I ever play professionally? It depends on what you mean by professionally. So I traveled to play on the Star City Games Tour for several years. I played in two of their three players championships tournaments when that was something that they were doing. There's an opt-in here, right? Yeah. Have, uh dozen or so top eights on their open series tournaments that is another phoenix sign me up i don't know i don't even need a land no land necessary that's true Te technically i am more of a professional magic player than most of the people actually play on the pro tour because Playing magic every day is my profession that pays my bills. Whereas most people who work, who play on the Pro Tour, uh, have an actual job. No, it's just another cantrip chaser. It's just like red one draw card, basically. No, nah, you can't do uh, cartoons and stuff like that. There's a lot of copyright issues with that, J-Robes. I know other streamers use things like other other cartoons imagery, and they're they're technically breaking their Twitch terms of service when they do that. This is going to be this into a Convoke Exile enchantment. Okay. Bye, friends. Good chance we kill them next turn. Need to find a, uh, a one mana spell or an untapped red source like that. This brings back our bird. Have you heard about my bird? I said a ba ba bird. Ba bird's the word. I said a bird. Shalai's an okay one of Encounters Company. I don't know. That's fine. It says spots where it's useful. Speaking of Shalai, do I want Lava Coil in my deck to interact with Shalai in this last game? I don't think so. I don't actually have that much burn for their face. I just like have just shock and like creeping chill doesn't care about Shalai. I'm just gonna run this back. Allow me to help with your profession then, Wu Feng Master. Thank you for the thank you for the biddies. I appreciate it. Happy to happy to dance for the bits. The gesture animation is so great. It's such a good job with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit done. So let's run this, see how it goes. Glad, glad the cannonades have punched in and gone to work a little bit here. Yeah, this deck is a lot of fun. Just like the the play patterns this deck generates are, it makes a lot of little, it makes the games into puzzles and puzzles are a good time.
I think I keep this. It doesn't have a cannonade or a phoenix in it, but it's got a shock to kill a fast Amara. And like Charter Course is hard to pops up. Just started watching and I really enjoy your commentary and responsiveness. It's insightful. How close are I to a full collection and where are some of the best budget decks in the area right now? I think the best budget deck hands down for constructed is the mono blue tempo deck. And my percentage complete to a full collection. I'm I'm pretty close. I've I've put I've put a lot of money into the machine at this point. I have most most constructed playable cards are in my collection at this point. I put I put a lot of quarters in. Yep. I'm gonna beat this game. I, I swear. One could argue I've put so many quarters in Jin. I am the final boss. Without a cannon in sight, definitely want to just take the Amara off the table here. It's gonna generate a lot of a lot of advantage for them if I let it sit there. In the late 90s. Nope. I uh, I only started... I started playing Magic uh, in the early 2000s. I was a small child then. I know I have the uh, the hairline of a middle-aged man, but I'm actually only 27. This is just Steam Vents Pass, I think. It's close. So, like, if I play the shock this turn, I can prevent them from flipping Legion's Landing. But if I play the shock this turn, I can't bring back my Phoenix next turn. How, imp how important is it that I prevent them from flipping this? This gains them life, too. They're probably going to flip this at some point, though, right? I think I'm going to prevent them from flipping the land. I think I'm going to kill their, life their stupid life linker here. Because, like, that also ramps them, too. So, like, if they miss a land drop, it's potentially very good for me. Perfect. Ooh, that's, a, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, we should, we should another cantrip at some point here. And like the drawing the candidate here gives us a lot of insurance, gives us like a lot more time to get set up. I think I'm actually going to, am I going to upkeep this, uh, this creeping shell? Yeah, probably. Or this mission briefing. Yeah, I'm going to upkeep the mission briefing because I get a, I get a lot of hits to find, uh, find some stuff. So before, before I draw, I'm going to go ahead and cast this mission briefing. There's an opt in here, right? There it is. All right, so I'm going to leave the discovery on top of my deck, and I'm going to target the opt with this mission briefing. And then we'll draw the discovery, and we'll go ahead and discovery and find a third phoenix, because we're professional. Third, third cannonade. I will settle for, or second cannonade, sorry. I'll settle for backup cannonade. So I've always had windows on my system upstairs, Jin, but actually um, I had somebody uh, get the extension to compile for me on Linux. So we should have Deckmaster at my normal workstation downstairs uh, moving forward. Generally speaking, uh, destroying lands is not particularly competitive in Magic because it, um, what's the word I'm searching for? Because the rate at which you do it is so inefficient. If they block here, I get to cannonade, clear the Shalai out. If they don't block, I get to kill them with Creeping Chill over the next couple turns. Can you talk about threat assessment, please? I mean, that's just, that's a very generic thing. It's not just like, this is threat assessment, so this is how it always works. All right, so they're at five here. If they have land uh, Lyra, it would give the Shalai lifelink. But outside of land Lyra, we're in a very good spot here. 
Yeah, creeping chill not targeting is great. Just like four mana helix you. Just like, huh, huh. Yeah, this build of the Phoenix deck is sweet. I think it's definitely better than what we were playing the other day. The the main deck, um, the main deck, what's it called? Uh, they're not in here. The main deck to electrostatic fields have been very, very good. This guy. I was like, I thought I had one this game. He's, over, he's over here. I forgot. I forgot he was over here. Sure. So they're dead if they attack with everything. So they have to block or they're dead. You didn't attack with the Shalai, you're blocking. Don't you didn't you didn't not attack to not block opponent. Come on now. I would rather lose than lose my Shalai. I mean, this is a this is a damned if they do, damned if they don't type situation, right? Like, if they don't block, I kill them. If they do block, I clean the board out. I guess they have a bunch of cards in their hand, so like, obviously, I, th I think this is a very easy block here. Yeah, yeah, it's just a Chromecast on the TV. Just pulls from one of my one of our Google albums. There's been some good pictures of D and them up there. My wife curates those pictures. How do you know what is a threat as in a bomb and what is a setup card? I mean, it depends on the text of the card and like what your deck is. And it also depends on like what the format is. Like it's all just very super contextual. <laughs> they left the screen cause they know they're dead. Yeah, this build was great. Um, I like how we ended up with, I, I honestly, I like I like just having three creeping chills in here, honestly. Um, looking at the sideboard, I'm not quite sure where I bring in this extra like radical idea. We brought in the last creeping chill against burn and I'd probably bring it in against control, so that's probably fine. I think I, I, think I like this main deck a lot as far as this list is concerned. The sideboard, I'm not quite sure, like this extra radical idea, I'm not quite sure on the split of other things, but it seems, seems pretty reasonable. Expansion, like what problem are you solving with expansion is basically what it comes down to. This deck dumpsters control decks, so I don't think you need more cards for control decks. I think three duress and two div visit is everything, everything you need to know, everything you need against control decks. All right, so let's, uh, let's wrap up with one more deck here this evening.